Randolph Scott. Whatever happened to Randolph Scott? Well, Randolph Scott's right here on Westerns on the Web, brought to you free by Wild West Toys, the only manufacturer of American-made Western toy cap guns. You know, Randolph Scott is one of my favorite Western actors. When Randolph Scott smiles, you want to smile with him. If you want to learn more about Randolph Scott, his son Chris has written a wonderful book uh, that's just a biography of his father, basically deals with his relationship with his father, and tells some other stuff about his dad. It's a wonderful book. It debunks some uh, vicious rumors about Randolph Scott, and it also enlightens you a bit about the man. And it's just a fantastic book. I enjoyed reading it very much, and it's titled, Whatever Happened to Randolph Scott, by Chris. I believe Chris's middle initial is H. I believe it's Chris H. Scott. So if you're looking around on the web and searching for a good book to read, let me recommend that one. Well, up next, it's a fantastic movie starring Randolph Scott. Get ready for it, because here it comes. After the end of the Civil War, a thousand mile cattle trail stretched from the plains of Texas to the railroad depots in Kansas. For 90 grueling days, through dust, heat, flies, loneliness, cowboys pushed Texas cattle northward along the Abilene Trail at an average speed of three quarters of a mile an hour toward Abilene, Kansas, where raw bread southern beef could be turned into hard eastern cash. Abilene was the end of the trail, the end of the trail hand's thousand mile, 90 day long boredom. What kind of a town is this? Not a saloon on that side of the street. I just wasted nothing but stores. Come on!
Cause the West is best for loving When the stars are shining and the moon is low You'll find me out with my Romeo At East I was always repressed That's why I love it out in the West I love it out here in the West Because the life is free and easy You can do most anything you doggone please There's room to stretch Sorry, Rita Why aren't you in church with the storekeepers? I was See that sign there, mister? We've only got two little laws here Don't break them, friend Her singing sounds better anyway if you don't shoot at it Oh! <laughs> Everlasting smell of cattle I hate the flies that buzz around my head I hate the sound of rattlers when they rattle It's much too far from home, sweet home It's hard to be a lady But listen, mister, please don't be misled I love it out here in the West Because the life is free and easy You can do most anything you doggone please There's room to stretch and there's room to breathe I'm just brimming over with zest Because I love it out in the west Rita didn't slug you. She works too hard at being mean, Charlie. Real meanness comes natural. Hmm. Guess he got past my boys without being seen. Getting to be a habit, watch it. You aren't thinking of closing me up, are you? I wouldn't want to. And the merchants across the street wouldn't let you. No saloons, no trail herds. No trail herds, and the merchants starved to death. Why is rain, Charlie? Then what do you want? Because if it's Rita, maybe I can fix it up for you. Keep out. This is private. Just put that on the bill. Anything else? There's nothing I want from you, Charlie, except on those signs. Only honorary women can get away with that, mister. Shooting off guns during church services. Other side of the street's getting out of hand again. What was that shooting we heard? Customer at the Pride got a little too enthusiastic, that's all. Carry their church with them, don't they? Looking for you, Boulder. Hello, Mr. Rago. Welcome back to Abilene. Nice trip north? Not bad. Here's a list of the stuff we'll need in the morning. Too bad to make you work on Sunday, but since you're doing it for me and you've already said your prayers, maybe you'll be forgiven. The Lord is very understanding. My boys are in for a fling at the honey pots. Maybe a little rough, but it's all in fun. Town's open, Captain. Marshall's got nothing to do. Maybe he'll give you a hand with my stuff. See ya. You homesteaders got no place in town here. And stay off that trail, a long way off of it. This is cattle country, and it's going to stay cattle country. Get on, Sherry. Need some help on this. All right, Father. Go after it, Jim.
This is one of my men. He went for his gun first. And the deal was crooked. I won't wrestle with these dogs. I got one more bullet left. We'll take care of you right now. Boys, we break up. You wouldn't be happy buried a thousand miles from home. Walk out ahead of me. That man's a murderer. What's your boy doing with a gun in his hand? Get going, George. Where's the music? Hit the bar, boys. Everything's on the house. Bought chips, Marshal. A couple of weeks, we'll be back. You'll be here. Because there'll be no guns checked, and we'll tear this crooked, cheating town apart and spread the pieces from here to the Texas border. I'll be here, Riker. Break it up, boys. Show's over. Go on over to jail, lock yourself up. I'll be over and let you out when Riker leaves town. What are you after, Dan? Why don't you let this town shoot it out and die? There are people in it. <laughs> what kind? You think anybody in this town has any solution for it? Maybe not. That's a weakness of an honest marshal. Got too doggone much pride. Maybe. Odds are wrong, Dan. Unless you've got a whole card up your sleeve. Yeah. Only friends you got are on the wrong side of the street. You stay here in town. We'll tear this town apart, he says. Only chance we got is to keep Riker satisfied. Riker's no cowhand to be slugged with a gun. We want a marshal to keep us in good with Riker, not a killer. Mitchell's got to get off his high horse. Need any help, Ed? Remember, Riker suggested I give you a hand. Well, guess I better be getting along. <clears throat> Me too. Of all the people in that saloon, you had to knock out the brains of the most influential cattleman on the trail. He's the only one bothered me. What else could Dan have done? Let him kill a man in cold blood? Likely Cap Riker was just shooting off his mouth. Father, there's something you've overlooked. See that pretty little star? And who put it there? You did. With instructions to keep this town peaceful and not let trail hands and saloon keepers get out of hand. But I didn't tell him to drive business away. What chance did we have if Fair and Riker decided to get along without any merchants here? All this trouble over one no-count gambler. I see. If there's any killing to be done, Dan just sees to it. It's done pleasantly. Is that it? Now, Sherry, let's go back. Four months ago, he didn't have a dime. The drought had killed off half his cattle and he needed a job. Is that right? Right. And as town supervisor, I appointed him marshal. Still right. Well, does that give me the right to ask him to watch his step or not? Father, what do you want Dan to do? Well, I thought maybe if he went to Cap Riker and explained it was all a mistake, maybe apologize. Apologize to Riker? In 24 hours, trail hands will sweep across Texas Street and shoot into your parlor windows just to hear the women scream. Are you trying to frighten me? I'm trying to remind you why you got a marshal, Ed. You're nothing but a wood tick hanging on to a trail town. You're a lost cause. I suppose you'd like to see me close up. No, I'd like to see you buck up, Ed, and not let them know how weak you feel. There may be another kind of business here for you soon. You starting on homesteaders again? They haven't a chance of surviving. Maybe I'd rather do business with homesteaders than with cattlemen. But I'm not going to be wiped out for my likes and dislikes. I'm not proud. I've got to compromise. And what I've got to do, you've got to do, too. Then you better get yourself another marshal, Ed. Nothing makes me feel cheap and wearing a star don't mean anything. Now, wait a minute, Dan. Now you're getting mad. You're marshal. I'm marshal. Dan, I think you're right. You should resign. How'd you know I was here? I always know where you are. 
No, I'm not resigning. I was only trying to put some steel in there. You didn't succeed. You never will. Never's a long time. Howdy, folks. You had a little trouble down the prize today, Dan. Oh, nothing important. I understand you filed for re-election next fall, Bravo. Uh, talk me into it. Figured on opening up a saloon or maybe going back to practice in dentistry. But somebody's got to keep law and order in the county. Law and order? Why don't you try helping Dan around here? Well, that wouldn't be fair, ma'am. I run the county, Dan runs the town. Besides, me and Dan don't always see eye to eye. Now, Bravo, I thought we were old friends. We are, Dan, and we are. But you got the idea you ought to kick up a fuss about things that are bound to happen anyway. I don't figure that way. Man's got to live. Cows get lost. Sometimes accidents happen and fellers get killed. Why get hot under the collar about it? And why go hunting for fellers that don't want to be found? Where's the sheriff? Where's the sheriff? Don't that train make enough noise not you adding to it? Sheriff? The train was held up. Train held up? You sure? Of course I am sure. I was on it just three miles out of town. What town? Why, this one. He was traveling as a passenger. Suddenly he pulled a gun and held up the coach. Get much? I don't know. He fired a shot over my head. Then he jumped off around the turn. Oh, that's a dangerous thing to do. That reminds me one time I was... He out. got $50 from me. That's a lot of money to be traveling with, stranger. I was saying... I now, was if you get a posse started right away, you might catch him. You might catch the wrong man, too, and get the county sued. What'd he look like? He was tall, had little brown eyes and a black beard. Had a little brown beard. I see. No identification. Poor old Bravo. I wonder how he'll get out of this one. You'll probably help him. Not me, county matter. Probably make him late for our game of Ben Pan at Big Ennis. Why do you go there, Dan? Ennie makes good drinks. And playing Fantan with Bravo in a boarding house full of girls is quite interesting. Well, now when the gossips ask me why you go there, I can tell them. What's that? That you haven't made up your mind which side of Texas Street has the most interesting women. Mister, can you tell me where the homesteaders camp is? Looking for a man named Hanneberry. Two blocks down the street, turn to your left and keep walking. Thank you, mister. Oh, just a minute. You folks are coming in pretty fast. I think I'll have a look at that camp myself. Want to ride, son? Yes, mister. Follow me. I'll show you the way. beard too. When you wear a sunbonnet and an apron, I'll grow a beard. When I wear a sunbonnet and an apron, I'll grow a beard. <laughs> you like her, mister? When I find out, I'll let you know. You know, you're pretty fresh. from, Mr. Hanabary. Ohio, mostly. Sit down, Sheriff. Here you are. Thanks. Uh, my name's Henry. Henry Dreiser. First off, I'm not the Sheriff. I'm just Town Marshal of Abilene. I'd have guessed you was closer to the land. Cattle, maybe. There's friendlier land than this around here. Government man told us we could raise 20 bushels of wheat to the acre. Didn't tell you this was cattle country, though, did he? It's government land. Much ours as anybody's. Opinion in town is you won't last long. Opinion here is we will. We've brought our families, and we're going to make this a fit country for them. We're not asking anything of anybody. There's land here to work, and we're going to put more in it than we take out. That's fair enough. But you like to be friends with folks in your town. But if they don't want it that way, it won't make much difference in the long run.
like that song you folks sing. My father died in the war. So did my son. Those are his children who are looking your horse over. Thanks. You bet. Oh, I don't believe you. I don't think you did at all. I did so riding, didn't I, mister? Sure did. I can drive a horse behind a plow. Doing what? Putting in wheat. Who you've been out looking for the man stuck up the train? I figure I got more trail to it than he did dollars. Any description? Six foot two, little brown eyes, little brown beard. Nobody ever saw. Your name Chet Younger? That's right. Boss wants to see you in his office. Six foot two. Little brown eyes, little brown beard. Nobody I ever saw before either. Two more dust cutters. Double whiskey cheese. Something on your mind, Charlie? Yeah. I think I've been making a mistake. Maybe these wheat growers aren't as big a joke as I thought they were. Pouring over the trail on three sides, like a flood. Maybe the merchants aren't the only ones to keep scared. They got a sharp nose for a dollar, these merchandise peddlers. And if they ever decide they can make more money off homesteaders than they can off cattle, they'll join up with the farmers. And drive this side of the street out of here. And out of every town within a thousand miles. It's loyalty for you. Loyalty? What's that? Yeah, it's... Loyalty is... Go on upstairs, Jed. See you later. Yeah, sure, Charlie. Yep. Gonna keep on playing, hard to get with everyone that is except with you. All you gotta do is snap your fingers and I'll be there. All you gotta do is clap 
Shot at him in the alley. Ever see him before, Charlie? One of Riker's men. Oh. Maybe someday I can finish a song without you breaking it up. Sounded awfully good down there. Maybe because I couldn't hear the words. Oh! oh. What's that for? For playing Target for four dollars a day. Clubs play. Eight of clubs, nine of clubs, ten of clubs. Manager Petticoat, Rita. Thanks. What are you all dressed up for? Oh, I didn't feel like changing. Good evening, Dan. Sit down. We'll all play as soon as I've beaten this expert. Less talk and more play. Jack of clubs, queen of clubs, king of clubs, and out. <laughs> Makes 440, you owe me. <laughs> what chance have you got against a woman like that? What chance have you got against any woman? Sometimes, Bravo, I just marvel at your intelligence. Yeah, me too. Sit in a couple hands, Rita? No, thanks. Sat in on a shooting tonight and it tired me out. Anybody get hurt? I understand the marshal's got a sore neck. I'm sticking it out again. Sore shins, but I'm not sure from what. I kicked you. Again. Thought we'd go to play a fan tan. Why? Because you're getting loco for mixing in everybody's business. The trail hands pay for their drinks on one side of the street, their canned goods on the other. Why don't you let them alone? You got any idea what this town would be like if the trail hands weren't kept in line? We playing Fantan or holding a town meeting. And so he's going to teach them to be polite and say thank you and get shot because that's his job? Why doesn't he go to work for Charlie Fair where there's a future? At least he'll still be here after we've had four new marshals. You know, that's an interesting point. Will he? What's interesting about it? This is not a one-day fight. 
It's the rider against the settler, the quick drunk against the family. Abilene may close out the cattle when the country's settled up. What'll you do then, Rita? This town is never going to close, and I'm never going to move. This is my kind of life. Why? Because I like it, and it likes me, and I don't look well in an apron, and don't ask so many questions! Would anybody be interested in playing a little fan-tan? Come to think of it, I would. Seven of spades. Eight of spades. I pass. Nine of spades. Ten of spades. Jack, queen, king of spades. Play. Up a couple of them torches. Come on. Mrs. Canby, you sure got all our sympathy. But why should anybody want to harm us? We are not peaceable people. I'll tell you why. Because cattlemen hate farmers. They hate us because we make 40 acres support a dozen people instead of one cow. There's only one thing left for us to do if we want to stay here, and that's to fight. Easy, son. We've got as much right here as anybody. It's government land, the cattlemen don't own it. What makes you so sure the cattlemen had anything to do with this, son? Who else would want to drive us out? Yes, who wants to drive us out? Quiet, quiet. Unless your investigation's getting out of control. I want you all to be quiet until I finish asking questions of the witnesses. Now, is there anybody here who recognized the perpetrators of this dastardly deed? I recognized one of them. How could you recognize him in the dark? It was dark when it happened, wasn't it? Farmers can see better in the dark than most folks. I know a farmer can't see his hand before his eyes. A fellow by the name of Donaldson right up here. What's his name, Frank? Go ahead, tell him his name like you told me. Jet Younger. We want to swear out a warrant for the arrest of Jet Younger. Thank you, Emily. Come again. Two boxes of 45, Sherry. They found out who it was. Jet Younger. But it didn't happen in town. 
It's a county matter. Why do you have to get mixed up in it, Dan? Somebody in town sent Jed Younger to burn out those homesteaders. Somebody in town ought to do something about it. I don't suppose it would make any difference if I asked you not to go. No. I thought you'd be in. How'd you figure that one? Younger and fair add up. What? Two to one against you. to Bravo that as far as I'm concerned I want Jed Younger brought in. Sent for you, Dan, because I heard you might give up marshalling. Did say something about it. I could use a man. Always figured I could land a job with you, Charlie. How soon you plan to quit? Well, now that depends. Have you got the final figures yet, Charlie? Just about. Oh, uh, meet my new partner, Dan. I told you I was going to take root here. From now on, I own the show in the Pride. But uh, you'd be working for me, Dan. I remember. Oh, uh, good luck. Anything wrong? I'm not sure. Dan, don't tell me you want an afternoon game. Yeah, I'll just look for Bravo. Hearing over? What hearing? Oh, that, uh, yeah, that's all over. I got a warrant for Chet right there in McCoot Pocket. Leaving soon? Soon to get 440 back. Why? Well, you might need a little help. Well, how do you like that? They ought to have him back here in jail before he knows what time it is. Play, Annie, you're holding up justice. Seven of diamonds. Seven of diamonds. Something right funny about this. What's funny? Your enthusiasm. Jet's a killer. Well, what do you think I am, a bumblebee? You've got everything but the sting. Anyway, you won't mind my going along with you, Bravo. I certainly would mind. What do you want to meddle into something it don't concern you for? That's what I want to know. Did Charlie send you to ask me that, or are you interested in my well-being? I'm interested in my business. And I'm interested in getting this game finished so I can get started. Play, Annie. Eight of diamonds. Why are you going on this manhunt with Bravo? Always help a fellow officer of the law. That's not your reason. Maybe I'd just like to ride up in the hills, away from people. I'll be waiting at your office, Bravo. Eight of spades. Nine of spades. Ten of spades. Jack of spades. Queen of spades. King of spades. Oh, shucks. Where are you going, Rita? If I told you, you wouldn't believe. To preserve law and order to the best of your ability as deputy sheriff. Dan, you want it inside. Me? Say goodbye. Well, don't say anything. Just put your arms around me and hold me. Sure. You big idiot! Oh. 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 Open this door! <laughs> Take care of yourself, Rita. I'll pick up that holding business when I get back. Dan, you let me out of here! Good idea, George, but it didn't work. Let her out in ten minutes. You ready, Dan? Come in, Bravo.
Sun's up. Okay. Use a little help around here. You got three deputies. What more you want? Had three deputies. Pulled out on us last night. You mean them polecats I tailed it? About 3 a.m. They didn't make too much noise. I went right back to sleep. If you've seen them go, why aren't you stopping? Couldn't have been much use to us. Hearts weren't in it. Maybe you and me better get out of here, too. Ain't much two of us can do. It only takes one man to catch Jet. Last night, before I went to sleep, I did a lot of thinking. About uh what? -huh. Oh, Jet Younger. This fire. How far it could be seen from up in the hills. What are you trying to say, Dan? That if the idea of this expedition was to warn Jet we were coming so he could hold up and stay out of our way, this is the proper place to build a fire. Shucks. You're just jumping to conclusions. Maybe so. And the first one is that Jet is probably where you can see this fire. Makes me remember there's an old line shack up there. Be a comfortable hideout. I'll look here, Dan. You better mix up you... some biscuits, Bravo. But you... Well, I figure we better be on our way. Which way? I think we'll turn back towards town and look up them deputies first thing. What about the line shack? Now, Dan, I'm in charge of this party, and I say we go the other way. I think I'll take a ride toward the line shack. You sure are a stubborn critter. I didn't hurt you, did it, Dan? I did it for your own good, son. I couldn't stand to see you get yourself shot up. Well, what do we care about them homesteaders, or Jet Younger, or anybody? You all right, Dan? I'd rather take him to conk on my own head, son. There's no sense in a man being so stubborn. I'll be back tonight to let you loose. The rest will do you good. Don't you go and make me look for you. You stay right here. Sneaking no good. I better get out of here.
Gator Team. Yeah. Hot today, ain't it? Might rain before the end of the week, though. Go away. Got any drinking water? Yeah, plenty of it in the well. You and your friend come on up to house. He ain't no friend of mine. He ain't. Sure, we're friends. Do this every day for the exercise. Come on, friend. <laughs> Now, uh, supposing I play a jack, uh, what happens? Uh, it all depends. Now, one of the first rules of the game is to Might take... be more profitable for you to wait for me here, Bravo. Oh, uh, I'll just play a little bit. Uh, maybe I can show him something about the game before you get back. Give me your word you'll stay here. You ever hear of a horse running away from oats? <laughs> now, uh, what did you say was worth the most, the uh, kings or the queens? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, 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 let's deal again now. <clears throat> That's you, Bob. Better give me a hand here. I ain't much at cooking. Need a little grease in that skillet. Wouldn't do that, Jet. What do you want? Just a little of your time, about 20 years. Charlie Fair said that... Bravo would camp where you could see his fire and then go in the opposite direction. Is that right? I don't know what you're talking about. Where is Bravo? Busy. Come on, Jet, let's start for town. I don't get this. You're not sheriff, you're town marshal. What do you want out of this deal? A little security for my children. You ain't got any children. Someday I might. Ready, Jet? Better take my coat. It's cold out. Better shoot. I'm not going. You're going. Tired across the saddle, kicking and scratching. Have to bring you back alive, Jet. Gotta prove you're not tough to get. That's important to me. Queen of Diamonds, King of Diamonds, and out. Hey! Finish that game yet? It makes $14.70 you owe me. Don't bother me with petty details. Well, that's the way it is. Brought you a present. Another friend to you fellas? What am I gonna do with him? He's your prisoner. Hey, can he play fan-tan? Shut up. 
How Dan fooling was fooling, but this year has took on a serious turn. Ever figure how many votes it might get you next fall if people in town saw you ride in with a murderer across your saddle? Trimble, did you catch him? He see him, don't you? Three cheers to Sheriff Trimble! Hooray! 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 Thanks, folks. I'm just doing my duty. Get me inside, you big four flusher. You put up quite a fight, you did. Well, Dan, I'm so terribly glad you're back. So am I. As a child, I burned my finger, and it taught me not to play with fire. Don't know why this lesson didn't linger. Here, this foolish heart of mine has burned its finger many times, but still it doesn't lessen my desire. Every time I give my heart, I know that it's the last. But when that love has passed, I sigh, well, maybe next time. Every time I give my heart, I'm back where I began. Just another also ran, but maybe next time, next time, I waited long for this romance, and when we met, my heart was lost. With you I think I stand a chance, but just the same. I've got my fingers crossed Every time I give my heart For instance, like with you I swear that for we two Any better now? No cheer. Pick up where we left off. You know, I think what I like least about you is that you're so sure of yourself. When a man rides down the middle of Texas Street, confidence is all he's got. Confidence. You're an easy target for any drunk who wants to take a pot shot at you. All that'll change. Rita, I think you've made a bad investment. Let's wait and see. And now, if you've found out everything you want to know, will you get out while I change? I haven't found out anything. You've got a screen change. I feel like talking. Come to think of it, it's the screen around you I don't like. Hand me the dress on that chair. 
and the porcupine quills you shoot out to keep people away from you. Why, no man who's walked or ridden into this town has ever gotten near you. What you need is a ride in the hills. I don't mix my drinks. You're scared. Get out. Trying to be tough because you're scared and scared because you're warm and soft. I'll lock my door after this. Better use up some of that before it spoils. I knew you'd do that. I let you stay to find out if you were like every other man who ever tried to get in here. Then you found out something, too. People seem to think I'm playing hard to get. I must confess that what they say is true. And I'm gonna keep on playing hard to get with everyone that is except with you. All you gotta do is snap your fingers and I'll be there. All you gotta do is clap your hands and I'll come running anywhere. All you gotta do is give a whistle. I'll be at your feet. And if you should wonder, do I love you? A very simple little test. All you gotta do is snap your fingers and I'll do the rest. As president of the Ladies' Aid, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest of honor, Sheriff Bravo Tremble. When I accepted this invitation to speak, it, it wasn't with no idea of politics or nothing. I just wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about what might happen if we didn't have the proper administration of law and order in this year county. Tell us how you captured Jeff Younger. Oh, it weren't much to capture in Jet. You stick a gun in the feller's ribs and, and he knows you're the kind of a sheriff who don't stand for no fooling with him. He just naturally comes along. <laughs> you mustn't be so modest, Sheriff Trimble. Tell us how you really tracked him down. Did Dan Mitchell help? Well, uh, so... Uh, did you get hurt in the fight? No, can't say that I did. Uh, oh, skin place here, too. But nothing compared to the way Jed got worked over. <laughs> be a long time before he does any more outlawing. <laughs> Figure he'll stay there for weeks in jail, uh, licking his wounds. <laughs> Sheriff Trimble! Sheriff Trimble, Jet Younger's escaped. Did you say uh, Jet escaped? Somebody smuggled him a gun and he shot his way out. Killed two men. Took to the hills again, has he? No, he's still in town. Has anyone notified Dan Mitchell? Dan Mitchell? You're the county sheriff. That's just it. It's out of my jurisdiction. Uh, he was headed for the stables, but Dan cut him off. Got to get off the street, folks. Hurry. Come on, hurry. Hurry. There he is. 
talking about you a lot at first. About me? Just rambling. Got the idea she's afraid of you. Emotional upset, Doc said. Sort of upset myself, come to think of it. All this killing. It ain't a part of the natural lives of people like us. No. Maybe you were right, Dan, about resigning. Had word from Charlie Fair today. Riker's on the trail again. He'll be here soon. I'll finish up my term, Ed. Better think it over while there's still a chance to pull out. I saw a motto on a sundial once. It said, it's always later than you think. Good night, Ed. Sherry. I want to talk to Dan alone. But Sherry, you... Please. Good night, Dan. something I want you to know. Ten years ago, when Father first brought me here, the very first day, I stood on Texas Street, and I saw two drunken trail hands fight it out with guns until one was dead. I was ten years old, and I saw a man's blood running in a little stream into the gutter at my feet. That's been abling to me ever since. It won't be that way much longer. It'll always be that way. No one can ever change it. Don't you try. Sherry, do you know what you're saying? Yes, I know what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm afraid. Afraid for myself and for you. Do you know how you terrify me? Every day I wonder if this is the day I'll see you lying in the street like... Sherry. If you care anything about me at all, take me away. Sherry, I, I wouldn't be any good to you running away. Being afraid would take half the fun out of life for me. Fun? Now I know what I saw in your eyes when you killed Jet Younger. You didn't kill him because you're Marshal. You killed him because you wanted to see him lying on the ground dead. You keep this job because it's fun. Because there's something in the killer in you, too. Jerry, stop. Jet wasn't the first and he won't be the last. You want to run this town with a gun in your hand. That's your life. You're bringing a fight on because it's fun. I'm running this town with my gun, Sherry, until I can turn it over to gentler people than any of us here. I don't believe you. There's no gentleness in you. Not even the hope for it. Do just one thing for us and for yourself. Resign. Please, please resign and go away. <laughs> That's right, Jim. We've all got to stick together. Well... That's the purpose of this organization. To stick together. And if we have to, to fight. We want peace, Henry. So are those people who were killed by Jed Younger. We've got over 400 family in this county. And there's more coming. We're getting dangerous to the trail herds and they know it. Henry's right. The town's people figure if they're decent to us, the trail hands will take it out on them. Be a fine country around here, if we're strong. Well, I guess we had about enough talk. Our first job is cutting those fence posts. We'll start stringing wire across the trail as soon as the posts are in. Across the cattle trail? It crosses our land. You've got a right to fence it. Come on, let's get out of Thank you, Mrs. Flint. I want some barbed wire, Mr. Balder. Barbed wire, huh? How much? 400 spools. What are you gonna do with that much? You're in business, aren't you? There's the money. That's all you got a right to ask for. I'm not asking for anything. Just can't sell dynamite to a fool or a half-grown boy. There are old men asking for it, Mr. Balder. Fine old men, and women and children. Haven't got any, Mr. Dreiser. 
Police drays, none for sale. But Mr. Balder. You got a minute, Miss Balder? What do you want, Mr. Dreiser? Your father refused to sell me barbed wire. I've got to have it to protect our land. More fighting and killing? Do I look like a man who likes killing? Do I come here with guns bristling all over me? What have I come here to buy? Wire. Just so I can mark off the place where I want to work hard the rest of my life. Is that a crime? No. Why is it so important to you? Because I want what my father didn't have, land, growing wheat, enough of it to raise a fine family with peace surrounding us. Is that a poor thing to want? No. No, it's not a poor thing. What are you hanging on to so hard? What's a girl like you got here that you can be proud of? We're the only ones that can give you a life worth living. And you know that too, don't you? If they let you. They'll let us. We're strong enough now. For more bloodshed? Well, if we just stand and wait, they'll wipe us out. What'll you do then? I know you. I've been watching you ever since I first came. Watching me? <clears throat> well, yes, I, I have a little now and then. Uh, uh, you're like us, Sherry. A lot like us. You want the same things that we do. You know, we got a lot in common. We're what this country can be, Sherry. And we can have it. All you have to do is to tell me where that wire's kept. I'll be back with wagons to haul it. Here's the money. Give us a chance, Sherry. You and me.
emptied the cattle. Take them inside. Get Doc Sanders. Lend a hand, boys. Come inside, Henry. Hannaberry is dead. Bob Rankin. The Freeman family. Wait a minute. Where were those fences? Across the trail. Across the cattle trail? You put fences across the cattle yes. trail? Yes. Well, you, you can't do that. Where'd you get the wire? First thing Riker will come in for is to find out who sold the wire. That's not all he'll be coming in for. Where are the rest of the homesteaders? I sent word from the meet at the bend of the river. Get them in here, in town, before dark. While there still is a town. Which way are you shooting, Charlie? Me? I'm not in this deal. I'm in the saloon business. You were. I'm giving you an hour to close up. No, oh, wait a minute. There'll be no drunken trail hands stampeding this town tonight. Maybe you haven't heard. The trail's closed for good. From what I hear, it's wide open again. Charlie, I'm giving you a chance to get out while you can. Seems to me you need that chance more than I do, Marshal. Seven people killed and about $6,000 in property damaged, I understand. This is another Gettysburg. What I want to know is who sold them that wire? Not me. I turned them down. Where do your wire shed empty? What's that? I sold that wire. Henry Dreiser said he wanted it to prevent any trouble. Didn't you know better than to trust a homesteader? And why shouldn't I trust a homesteader? They're people like us. Better. Do they come here with guns bristling all over them? They're the only ones who can make life here worth living. They didn't know crazy trail hands would stampede cattle. Well, they got what is coming to them. But what about us? Riker knows that wire was sold right here in town. And he'll be here tonight. He'll burn us out, drive us out of town. Why do those homesteaders have to move in here? Mind if I say something? Boys, I'd think it over carefully. Whatever happens here will spread. This is a fight for the state of Kansas, which way the country's going. Better be sure you pick your friends. What's a few homesteaders worth in a fight? Not very much, but a thousand of them are worth a lot. Well, there's not that men in the county. Henry Dreiser has a hundred men in his Farmers Protective Association, and he's only 25% organized. How many people is that, Ed, figuring three to a family? It's... over a thousand. But suppose Riker drives these homesteaders away? I think you can discount that rumor. Well, you're not planning on tangling with them again, are you? There were people killed this afternoon. Makes my position pretty clear, doesn't it? Dan. When I sold Henry that wire, I didn't realize it would all come tumbling down on you. Funny. You never know who's going to fire the first shot until the fight begins. 400 families. If each family spent, say, $500 a year here in town, how much business would that come to? Almost, almost a quarter million dollars. How much do the trail hands spend? Now, if 400 only spend $300 a year, if, 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 I know what I'm going to do, I'm going straight to Charlie and get word to Riker that Dan don't represent me. I am neutral. I don't want any part of this fight. Quiet. Suppose in a year from now, there are 800 families here. That's half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. And no shooting. But suppose the homesteaders are wiped out.
you turn him out, Pete, or you want me to? People are mad, Dan. Everybody loved old man Hanabury. Evening, Marshal. Evening, Jake. They want to settle this once and for all. Make this the last fight. I think it will be, Henry. I'm just dreaming over zest Because I love it out in the west sure would have looked nice in a kitchen apron. What do you mean, stopping the show? I still own this place, and I'll give the orders. That's fair enough. Tell them to turn out the lights. Grab it, boys. Look out, man! Lights out, Charlie. You want me to do it for you? Set the place on fire. I wouldn't want to do that. Wait. Lights out. you to pack up. Maybe uh, breaking it up is a better idea. I'm breaking nothing. You're closing me up. Listen, Rita. It's going to be pretty rough here in no time. Not safe. Oh, don't you tell me what's safe. You big blonde baboon. Don't you warn me. You wait till Riker gets here. You warn me. Seemed only friendly. I do the same for you. The jig's up. It sure is. But not for me. Who's going to stand with you when the shooting starts? The merchants? The homesteaders? Oh, you'll be so lonely on that street you'll look like a duck in a shooting gallery. The tame always win, Rita. This place will fall around your lovely ears, dollar by dollar, dime by dime. Get out of here before I kill you! And I don't mean half kill you! This is my property, paid for with my money. And if you ever set foot inside this room again, I'll beat your brains out, you brainless idiot! Suppose a thousand families only spend three hundred dollars a year. Here they come! Cat, look. What's the idea of the saloons being closed? New law went into effect tonight. Do you think you can stop us? You got a pretty strong outfit. Boys, anybody want to get the trail dust out of their throats? <laughs> Take him long to get liquored up and start on this side of the street. Hey, Cap! Cap Oh, I'm sure glad to see you. Let him close you up, did you? Oh, now, Cap, look! It was... All right, boys, take it. Let's go!
Sherry. Are they coming? I hope so. But if they don't get here soon, they'll be too late. I understand you told them about selling us the wire. And that you believed in what we're trying to do. I believe in you. Let a cattleman show you how, son. What do you mean? Nice work. I didn't mean to hit him so hard. <laughs> How'd you feel? Fine. Oh, Dan. <laughs> Sherry, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, Dan. And Henry. And me, too. It's getting pretty rough down there, Dan. Can't you stop it? She's a wonderful girl, Henry, and you'd better get her out of here before I change my mind and take her away from you. Take her away? You mean you... Exactly. Come on, Henry. I'll explain it to you. What are you doing out there? Well, somebody's got to protect the sheriff's office. Where are you fixing to go? There's a fellow over at Causeville has been losing some sheep. You want me to come over and investigate it the first chance I had? Hmm. Sheep. mistake, Henry. Why should we help a town that don't want any part of us? What's the matter? Afraid? No, ma'am. We're not afraid. We just don't quite know what this is all about. Well, then I'll tell you. It's about drunken trail hands that don't want you to settle the land that's yours. It's about farms and homes. And it's about a fool marshal who's got himself in a corner because he knows better times are coming if the people only have the nerve to do their part. In this town? It's not this town you're fighting for. It's the right to live. What's going on here? You say this town wants no part of you. Why, here's Sheriff Trimble, come to lead you. What's that? Must be at least 300 boats in these homesteaders. Why, oh, I gotta see a man about a sheep. You're the sheriff that captured Jeff Younger, aren't you? Yeah, well, I had a hand in it. Well, we'll follow you, Sheriff. Come on, boys. around the stores and buildings on that side of the street. You hear that, fellas? Spread out. On that side. Over there, boys. On that side. What's Riker's men up to now? Having the time of their lives, wiping out the saloons and gambling houses. And you ain't doing nothing about it? Not me. They're doing too good a job. She sure, sure is.
more somewhere else. Tell you boys, if they try to cross the street, they'll find our men waiting for them. I'll take my boys anywhere I want to go. You're not taking them anywhere, Riker. You're coming with me. I am? Yes. You're under arrest. The charge is murder. We've had enough trouble. It's over now. Where's Cap? Where's Riker? Riker's dead, and so is your part of Abilene. All that's left of it is the trail back. Boys, this is the way a tough street dies. Not with a roar, but with a whine. You don't want to die here with it. The tame are taking over Abilene, and they're tougher than you think. Better ride, boys. Now's our chance. Drive them out of town. Get them, boys. Get back. The fight's over. Let him ride out of town. I don't know whether you joined us or we joined you, but it's good to be together. Remember one thing, no beard. <laughs> you know what I was thinking, Annie? That there's time for one game of fan ten. <laughs> enjoyed this Randolph Scott Western brought to you free on the web by Wild West Toys. You know Randolph Scott had three really good friends. Uh, two of his good friends were actors and made some wonderful movies. Cary Grant was one of his good friends and so was Fred Astaire. If you're looking for some non-Western entertainment and you want some quality entertainment, I'd recommend you check out some of Cary Grant or Fred Astaire's movies. They're, most of them are just fantastic movies. But Randolph Scott had another very important friend, somebody that was pretty close to him in life, and that was the Reverend Billy Graham. And if you're looking for direction in your life, I'd recommend you check out some of the videos that may be on YouTube of uh, some of the stuff that Billy Graham has to say. Y'all have a great day. Hope to see you again on Down the Trail.